All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? How is it going? I am Is There No One Else? And in today's video, I'm doing a video that I have never done before. I'm gonna, <laughs> uh, you, you guys will see why I'm doing this. But uh, long story short, a Discord member of mine posted that they got an official warning from the ESO forums. And it was the, what they were warned under was bashing and conspiracy theories, which really caught my attention. I was like, wow, what? how do you get an official warning about a conspiracy theory about a video game? So I, it, it piqued my interest immediately. And then I started reading it and I was like, wow, uh, I actually agree. I, am I a conspiracy theorist? I, do I need to get my tinfoil hat for this? Because I, I actually think this is a legitimate argument. And then I started thinking about it and reading it more. And I, I was like, you know, I've participated on the forums for years. As you guys know, I participated in the PTS. I, I read the patch notes, uh, patch note guy, you know, hello. And uh, I've seen a lot more harsh and insulting messages get edited and get uh, pieces of it removed for baiting and these sorts of things. And this one was just deleted outright. I went and looked at the, the thread. It was removed and she was received. She was given a warning for this. And it got me thinking about why that would happen. And, you know, since I'm a conspiracy theorist, potentially, I went down the route of, wow, they, they really didn't like this post. The, mo <laughs> the moderator that removed this must have really gotten their feelings about this. They didn't want it out there. And uh, let's see why. And so that's that's kind of the rabbit hole I went down. And I was like, you know, they're, they're clearly, they don't want this out there. So what better way to not have it out there by posting it on YouTube and having it go to an even wider audience for you all to see. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna read this post, we're gonna talk about it, we're gonna see if, if we're all conspiracy theorists or if this is an actual argument. And you guys can let me know in the comments section on where you stand. So let's dive into it. Uh, yeah, it reads as follows. Greetings. This account has been reported for a code of conduct violation on the ESO forums and is receiving an official warning, bashing and conspiracy theories. Thread, what is holding ESO back from being the greatest of all time MMO for you? Exactly what the title says, it's very self-explanatory. What could this game do better? So it's it's a constructive criticism thread. And so people are posting different opinions. Some people think the game's already great for them and other people are providing thoughts. And this person, uh, my Discord member responded with this. Zoss, LOL, so ZeniMax Online Studios is holding them back. And then she goes on to say, so this is an example of how Zoss has created feedback loops for their game. It goes kind of like this. Zoss neglects or ignores an aspect of their game. Step two, people that played that part of the game begin to no longer enjoy it. Step three, these people leave, reducing the overall population of folks engaging in that aspect of the game. Step four, Zoss looks at player numbers and sees that the neglected part of the game uh, has low interaction. Step five, an assumption is made that that part of the game isn't very popular and so gets even less attention or resources. Step six, return to point two. This has happened to werewolves. It's happened to PVP. It's happening to Necromancer. It's a major issue. So her contention is that Zenimax over nerfs things. And when they over nerf things, people no longer want to use it. And uh, this creates a loop where the development community, the development team can then look at these things and say, well, nobody's looking at this. Let's no longer acquire attention to this. Uh, and now feedback loops are important. Uh, I don't want to get too nerdy about this, about this specific video. The last time I did a recording on this, it got too long, but long story short, it's good to get constructive feedback. It's good to also filter some feedback. Uh, the problem with filtering too much is you can then leave out important information. So if I'm hypothetically of the belief that two plus two equals five and I show you guys a couple websites and I say hey guys two plus two equals five I found this source this source and this source and then I ignore all of your guys rebuttals from mathematicians and these sorts of things and and other things saying I'm wrong uh, I'm, I'm missing some very very valuable information and so I'm then going to go through my life being wrong and yeah, that's what happens. If you if you have a negative feedback loop and you're you're filtering out too much information, uh, you could potentially jump to the wrong conclusions and it could be problematic for your game, which is what this person is saying. 
So they brought up three points and we will dive into those as well. But I thought of one and, and I think this one is pretty indisputable. And so I wanted to kind of bring that up first and then discuss hers. So uh, a, a while back, about four years ago, I want to say, uh, ESO rebalanced all of the racial passives. So as you guys know, uh, races in ESO all have different passives The at that point in time. Red Guard was the strongest stamina based race in the game. Now I know, I know a lot of you newer players are like, what the hell are you talking about stamina based? Everything's hybrid now. I, I know it, it was a weird time back then. People were running Red Guards, people were running stamina based weapons and skill lines and stuff. It's, it was fucking crazy. Okay. It, it's different now, but, but just most people had Red Guard. Red Guard with their statistics were, was the best PV, was one of the best PVE specs. It was also one of the best PVP specs ab across basically every single class in the game. I, I myself, I had like 12 or 13 classes, six stamina based classes. I want to say four or five of mine were Red Guard because that's how good it was. I had my one Wood Elf Nightblade because of course I did, of course. Um, and so at that point in time, they, they balanced all these and then they gave us two race change tokens and they nerfed Red Guard into the ground. Now, now, not to get too tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist and everything, but but part of that still rubs me the wrong way that they gave us, that they balanced all these racial passives and they made one of the strongest races in the game completely worthless. Uh, and then essentially, if you wanted to play that class at a high level, you were forced to, if you had multiple classes like me, you were forced to uh, fork over crowns for race change tokens. And so it was, it was probably pretty profitable for them. To, to make that adjustment, in my opinion. And so that's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but that's not what this video is about. But that happened four or five years ago. Since then, we have seen races in ESO get changed over time. We've seen Wood Elf get buffs. You know, they at one point, they didn't have the dodge roll armor penetration passive. Uh, we've seen Khajiit. I even talked about it on this channel, where although they are the critical damage class or race, they were not doing the most critical damage in the game. That was Orc. And so uh, not just me, uh, a lot of people talked about that. Uh, but with that discussion among the community, Khajiit's got buffed to critical damage. Orcs got a little bit of an adjustment to overall flat damage to make an adjustment. And things got a lot more balanced. We've seen Imperial, uh, the Imperial race get uh, cost reduction increased as well and so now things are a lot closer a lot of the racial passives you know it's a it's a pretty good mix of pick and choose right a lot of them are, are very close to each other except for one red guard now why is that now it could be you know it could be a few things uh my point of view on this is why did all of these other racial passives get buffed but red guard did not like is there is there something about it are people not like what is it and so i think occam's razor uh in this situation would be nobody's using it it's so bad that nobody is talking about red guard passives when you talked about Khajiit, Khajiit was at least kind of close. It just wasn't good enough. Uh, Wood Elf was the exact same way. Imperial was the same way. And so they gave all these different ones tweaks and adjustments. We all know that ZeniMax, when it comes to balancing things for combat, they listen to feedback. Uh, a lot. If you provide a lot of feedback, they will listen to it. But if something just stops existing, people stop using something, it, it lends credence to the fact that maybe they're just not providing feed like the community is not fighting providing enough feedback about red guard anymore and so the development team doesn't even think it's worth investing into i think this is a, a perfect example of what has happened like they created a negative feedback loop for red guards nobody's running it anymore people obviously in the last five years somebody's brought it up but it's not brought up enough for them to invest the time or the money or the effort in order to make racial passes better again i i, I think this is in i think this one is pretty indisputable now let's talk about the ones that she brought up uh it's happened to werewolves uh werewolves were last strong two years ago i still read the patch notes i i haven't played much in the last year i haven't really seen any substantial werewolf buffs and there was a point in time, and we all know this, there's werewolves either go from being like overused and extremely powerful to completely nerfed into the ground. And, and Zenimax really can't figure out a way to get them in a middle ground to where they're competitive. But there's a lot of people that enjoy playing werewolf. There, there are a lot of players that enjoy playing it and they don't feel it's just not in a good spot right now. Like, I know some people have PTSD from dealing with werewolf hordes. I understand that. But 
allowing a playstyle to exist is a good thing. Allowing a playstyle to be competitive is a good thing. It hasn't been competitive in years. And so I think you could listen to the argument that maybe not enough people are bring talking about werewolf buffs. And so ZeniMax doesn't feel the need to bring forward werewolf buffs. I think this is a legitimate argument that, sh that can be made. Uh, it's happened to PVP. I just, uh, I, I've talked about this on the few videos I've done over the last year, that performance isn't in a great spot, and I would come back in quarter three of 2023, and I would, after they did their their server architecture overhaul and, and see how things are going. I even commented on the forums. I asked for an update, and uh, we got a comment from Matt Ferrara that basically said, hey, everything we did <laughs> didn't work, so we rolled everything back, and we are content with where PvP is right now. Uh, this was during the Mid-Year Mayhem event. He's like, we all see that performance is working really well during the Mid-Year Mayhem event. It always has. It, it always has, even during the worst performance times. As soon as Mid-Year Mayhem ended, performance went back to being crap again, and so you just see a lower population. Uh, but Rich Lambert has also said uh, the minute they fix performance, they were going to also... Uh, implement PVP changes. Now, obviously, this is this is a recent change in the last year. We'll have to see what they come out with next year if they introduce new PVP things. But we've seen this happen. Uh, Battlegrounds has never had performance issues. Imperial City has never had performance issues. Why have they not looked to say, hey, like instead of, you know, people getting upset about laggy, bad performance in Cyrodiil, instead of like, there's clearly nothing we can do about that. Why don't we provide more outlets for these PVPers to play in different areas? Why don't we provide more game modes? Why don't we provide a couple more maps so people can enjoy Battlegrounds more? Why don't we uh, revamp Imperial City? Because even when Imperial City has its double Telvar event and there's people everywhere, it, it feels like the performance is so much better because each district is kind of, uh, it's blocked off and it's like it's, it's, it's its own instance. And so performance is so much better there. If they wanted to make PvP adjustments in these areas because it actually works, they would. But either they don't want to, or they're not getting enough feedback from the community about it. Uh, hell, even a couple years ago, no CP was when I joined, when I made the full switch over to PCNA, no CP was the biggest Cyrodiil campaign in the game. And then they removed all the procs from it. They, in, they introduced only a few sets. They've made no adjustments since then. And so it went immediately in one patch from the most dominant Cyrodiil server, the most populated, to a ghost town. An absolute ghost town. And and every once in a while you'll hop on and like you'll still see like a bar that here here or there. But the issue is is it was good. They made changes. It's now bad. And they don't go back and look at these things. And I think part of it is is I'm sure some people talked about it. <laughs> but now that nobody plays it anymore, they don't hear feedback for it anymore. And so they don't look to change no CP. It was the most populated one on PCNA and I'm pretty sure on PCEU and it doesn't exist anymore. Once again, negative feedback loop happening here where players are moved away from something they enjoyed because of a huge change that ZeniMax made. Uh, happened to Necromancer and then the final one, it's happening to Necromancer. This is the one I disagree with. So I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I disagree with this. Uh, I, I believe that there is something else afoot about Necromancer uh, because we saw it happen with Warden. Uh, if you were around when Warden came out, Warden was also the Juggernaut powerhouse uh, class for a while until they introduced Necromancer. And then they nerfed Magicka-based Wardens into the ground. There were, there were patches where stamina-based Wardens were not very good. Uh, and I think a lot of that was because they were selling their new class. They were, they were selling Necromancer. And so they wanted people to play Necromancer. And if they want them to do that, they have to make other classes not be as good and not stand out. We remember Bash Crow, Bash, like, just the bash ultimate existing and people just nuking everybody. Remember every single trial running necromancers because you could stack the vulnerability ultimate. Uh, you could just keep 100% uptime on vulnerability and that's how trial score runs would, would get completed. They made necromancers so freaking good in PvP and PvE, it sold uh, more chapters for them because it was that powerful. I think with the Arcanist coming out and with Arcanist and some of it is some of its survival abilities, they had to go out and adjust some other classes and so i think they adjusted necromancer for that reason and yeah obviously people aren't playing it as much and because they're not playing it as much they are no longer 
providing feedback on it, and it'll probably be a while before it gets buffs again. Sadly, this is the way some classes go sometimes. You see you see a lot of good classes get adjustments. Over the last couple of years, Nightblade gets patch adjustments every single patch, although it's always been in a good spot or a great spot for the last few years. You've seen DK get multiple adjustments, even though it's always been in a good or great spot. And Necromancer just kind of sits by the wayside because nobody's running it. And so once again, it's like, okay, well, do they have something against Necromancer? Probably not because they didn't three years or four years ago when they were selling their uh, DLCs for it. What is happening? Well, people are probably not providing feedback about Necromancer in the same way that they're providing feedback about the classes that people are using, like DK, like Nightblade, like these other sorts of things. And so even though I kind of disagree about Necromancer, you can still see a case, in my opinion, that this is what's happening. And so I don't know why this got completely removed for bashing and conspiracy theories. Like, I, I don't think this is a conspiracy theory at all. I, I think this is a legitimate argument. And even if you disagree, I think it's a legitimate argument and it's a legitimate discussion to be had. Now, as far as bashing goes, maybe they got in their feelings. Maybe they got in their fee-fees about Zoss LOL. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not telling you guys to go to the forums and type Zoss LOL in threads or anything like that because who knows, you might catch a permaban because we got... We got a moderator out there that, that, that didn't like this post, and so I'm not sure exactly what it's about, but this is a problem. This is a problem for the game. This is a problem uh, that has existed for a while. It's not just the moderators, it's the development team. The development team has a really hard time listening to the player base about anything. They don't listen about anything. They don't listen to feedback. They don't listen to constructive criticism. Unless you are just full on ESO fam represent 24 seven, they don't like it. They don't like it. And so then they keep this echo chamber. And when they're in this echo chamber in this bubble of everything being positive, all of a sudden people start leaving and they have to have a meeting last year in 2022 with all of their stream team members about what they can do to make things better. Now, with a lot of content creators leaving and you know they have their new free uh, endless archive thing they're now once again paying people like shroud to come back and play the game because frankly like a lot of content creators aren't covering the game anymore and it's not just pvpers it's pveers as well and so yeah they're they're just in a in a not so good spot and and I have heard nothing but good things about Endless Archive. I've heard people say it's actually a lot of fun. It's actually enjoyable. I'm not saying anything negative about that. But they're, they put themselves in a hole from a perspective where people just aren't looking at this game anymore. Like they, ever since Update 35, they're just not looking at this game the way that they used to. And so they're trying to draw new players. They're trying to do go that route. But these sorts of things are going to continually happen until they start listening to feedback from the community. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to. That's just my opinion, of course. That I, I will take my tinfoil hat off now. But I wanted to hear from you guys. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you think I'm crazy, if you agree, or if you disagree with this. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think I think there's an argument to be made, and I, I think we have a a sensitive moderator. I think that's what happened. I think somebody got very, very sensitive about ESO fam and, and they didn't like it and sucks. Sucks sometimes to, to hear the truth, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.